My name is Dana Kremens and I'm a student at Simon Fraser University. I just started the Masters in Public Health program in Social Inequities and I'm a queer woman from the southern United States with multiple disabilities. At my undergraduate university we had a really good disability studies program that kind of opened my world to a lot of different things and um, since I was a part of that program disability has always been a major focus in all of the work that I've done. Um, and that's been a very interesting experience coming to Simon Fraser University where there is not the same disability presence here as there was at my undergraduate university. And I have other classes that I'm in such as social determinants of health and core concepts of public health and while they tend to hit on the, the trifecta of um, disability or diversity issues, excuse me, um, you know, such as race, class, gender, there's virtually no mention of any kind of oppression or exclusion that people with disabilities face, which is pretty problematic considering the extent of um, abuse and harms that have been enacted among uh, upon that population. So thankfully I've been given support by my professors to maintain that emphasis on disability studies throughout all the work that I do for those classes. So other issues I've had is uh, trying to navigate disability services. Um, I have I have a lot of intense anxiety and depression issues that are exacerbated by stress and uh, subsequently tests and uh, I try and get accommodations for tests such as like having more time or being able to take them in quiet areas just so that I can focus more on the material versus you know all of the sounds going on around me and that process involves me getting to see a counselor here, that counselor referring me to a therapist, that therapist diagnosing me, taking that diagnosis to the disability student services, them then evaluating that diagnosis and determining whether or not they find it worthy of receiving any kind of accommodations and if they do find it worthy, what accommodations are they willing to offer. Um, this is a pretty complex process that takes a, a very long amount of time and by the time I would have gone through that, I wouldn't have received any kind of assistance or accommodations for the class that I needed them for. And so ultimately, that was kind of um, just made really structurally inaccessible. I was told that without going through all of those hoops, that I would just be getting a special advantage um, I get, uh, you know, it, in relation to my other classmates, which I thought was also kind of problematic because they're fine with me having a unique disadvantage but if they were to make any kind of effort to kind of even the playing field between me and my cohort, then that would be, um, that would be problematic. Like bringing me up to the same speed is more of a problem than excluding me from the get-go. I'm Maribel Moroni. I'm a student at Langara. You can't see my disability, they're non-visible. So many times people tend to think that it's not serious or they don't take it seriously because they can't see it. In the classroom similar things happen because first there's the whole, in my school at least, the whole fact that you have to carry around this letter to your teacher. It's like, I have a disability. You feel somehow that they might think that you don't need those accommodations or you could do perfectly fine, especially when it comes to disabilities that are, in my case, like sometimes I feel fine and sometimes I don't. For someone that might have an anxiety disorder and depression together, um, for someone who doesn't understand what it's like to have both, it's hard to understand how, like, they can't, like, how they function together because you know sometimes, like, depression makes you not want to do to do anything, and you're very conscious about what you have to do. Like, I have to do this and I know I have to do this, and your anxiety just starts building like, oh my god, I have to do this, I have to do this. But on the other hand, your depression is like, I can't do anything. So what do you do? 
students should have different options to show that they have learned something in this in the course as well as the fact that like if a student cannot physically get out of bed in the morning and it could happen often and it's not because they don't want to go to school it's because they just can't they need to also have an accommodation that allows them to miss class without being penalized for not being there. Hi, my name is Daniel. Um, I'm an SFU student and I also work for a provincial organization that uh, gives accessible textbooks to students and colleges. So I kind of see this uh, from both sides, but especially from the service delivery side. Um, I, yeah, I don't have any uh, learning disabilities, so my experience is more within c connecting with students and getting materials for them, accessible materials. The things that I think about is a lot more about giving access to, to everybody and having proper funding in place to be able to, to give it. For example, uh, a lot of things, the higher quality accessibility or more expensive things to get to students, they're denied just on the basis of that it costs too much money. And I think that is partly coming true. I mean. There's people like people with disabilities entering uh, higher education in fields that were previously um, completely denied to them. People used to say, you should just know that you can't do that. And I think in the last 10 or 20 years, they've actually been able to enter like many fields. But at the same time, there's still progress to be made. There's still a lot of institutions where there's not enough funding or not equitable. Like between from one institution to another, there's not the same level of service or the same like beliefs about accommodation. In terms of, uh, we were talking about uh, training for instructors and people designing courses, things like that. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in giving training sessions. That way, they're not, the student who is like needs accessibility isn't have to be the ambassador for it. Hope, ideally, they would be trained beforehand. And I'm not sure if that's something that's covered in their academic uh, career because even though they became an expert in their subject and then they're able to teach it, they didn't necessarily have the training to like deal with every aspect of teaching the way that say like a primary school teacher does. My name is Kim McKay. I'm an academic advisor at Simon Fraser University and in the past I've worked at a writing center at a college and I've also worked as a tutor for a variety of students including students with different learning differences. What I often hear from students with learning differences and students who identify as having disabilities is when they're going to their instructors and asking for changes or accommodations to assignments or assessments that the instructor often takes that as the student is asking for um, things to be easier. They're asking to do less work, they're asking to kind of get out of something. And instructors do all deal with a certain amount of academic dishonesty, so I think that becomes a little bit of a default, like, oh, this student is asking to write a paper, say, instead of doing a timed exam because they want to get out of doing harder work. But what I found with the students I've worked with and talked to is usually these students are willing and are doing a lot more work than students whose learning style fits better with what's being presented in the class. So I think what would be really helpful is for instructors and students to have more of a shared vocabulary around talking about learning differences and accessibility and accommodations. So I think that already happens to some extent with things like the Centers for Students with Disabilities that various institutions have, but often something's kind of lost in the process. So that if a student needs a certain type of accommodation, the instructor doesn't necessarily know how to uh, put that into place. And so I think if there was more kind of education and workshops for instructors around how to design your course from the outset to be accessible to different learning styles, um, that would cut down on the work for them. Because I think what instructors are often afraid of is, oh, if I'm going to have to customize things for this student, I'm going to have to be able to do it for every student, which is not is not the case. I mean, the case is that if we have a student uh, particularly one who is, say, registered with the Center for Students with Disabilities um, that is coming and saying, these are the type of accommodations that allow me to, to reflect my knowledge. That's not, that doesn't mean that every student who comes along saying, I don't, you know, I don't like exams, 
that the instructor is going to have to do the same thing for them. I think another thing that maybe makes the student-instructor relationship um, difficult is that a lot of times instructors probably don't have a lot of detailed knowledge about what different learning differences students might have and how that might affect them and how they communicate. And in that moment when the student comes to them asking for something and you know the instructors are very busy and they're dealing with a lot of students, they might not realize um, what a big deal it is for the student to do this. Um, how difficult and intimidating it can be. I mean, it's intimidating for all students to approach their instructors. Even when they're the friendliest professors ever, probably your students are still a little bit intimidated just because of you're a professor. Um, so it takes a lot of energy and work for a student to get to the point where they can come to their instructor, try to articulate their needs um, and their learning style. So I think that there's work that can be done around educating instructors and staff more about the range of learning differences students are dealing with, the experiences that, that those students have probably had in the past with instructors and school staff, um, and around different ways to respond and different things to keep in mind when talking to those students, and maybe useful questions to ask to help the instructor understand where the student's coming from.